Okay, last time together we talked about congruent triangles and the information that we use to prove that two triangles are congruent, such as side, 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 angle, side, and angle, side, angle postulates. Okay, so if we know that two triangles are congruent, what do we know about their parts? Well, if you remember, we talked about this. All of their corresponding sides and all their corresponding angles are congruent. And that's actually a theorem that we can use. Okay? If two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. We also say that as corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCTC. You can use that as an abbreviation. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so let's look at this example. If we are given that AB segment, the distance, the measure of AB equals the measure of CD, well, let's go ahead and mark our figure with the information we know, then we know that those segments are congruent, right? And angle C. AB is congruent to angle ACD. So these two angles are congruent. Now in order to prove, we want to prove that segment AD is congruent to segment BC. Okay? Well, if we were able to prove that these two triangles are congruent, then we could use the, the CPCTC theorem to state that those segments are congruent. So let's look and see if there is a way we can prove that these triangles are congruent. We're given side and angle, and look, segment AC is shared by both of them, so that's congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So we could use side, angle, side to prove these triangles are congruent, and if we prove the triangles are congruent, then we can state that these segments are congruent by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent theorem. But first, we need to prove the triangles congruent. So our first statement is always our given. So the measure of AB equals the measure of AC, and angle CAB is congruent to angle ACD. And that is given. Okay, our next statement, so we've gotten one of our, our segments, I mean, we've gotten our angle stated as congruent, but we've got these measures are equal, but we need that they are, sides are congruent to prove that the triangle is congruent. So we need to state that segment AB is congruent to segment CD because if the measures are equal, then the segments are congruent. And remember to be very general over here on your reasons and specific on your statements. So we specifically stated the segments over here, but over here, just in, in general, any segment whose measures are equal, then they are congruent. Okay, so now we've got an angle, and we've got our side. Now we need to state that segment AC is congruent to itself. And we can do that using the reflexive with an X property. Reflexive, not reflective. Okay, so now we've got an angle and a side and a side in the order of side, angle, side. So now we can state that triangle ACD is congruent to, and let's make sure that we put it in the right order. So if ACD -A -C -D is congruent to triangle, actually, CAB. Okay, you see that AC is congruent to AC, CD is congruent to AB, okay? So that's how you can make sure you put it in the right order. And 
We proved those triangles are congruent by side angle side. Now we can state that these segments are congruent because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And that's it. We're done. And you can tell here AD is congruent to BC. CB is the same thing. Okay, let's review for a minute what the difference is by, between bisecting, something being bisected, and two lines bisecting each other. Okay, just because a line bisects one line doesn't mean they bisect each other. So, if we say that, excuse me, segment RS bisects ET, then that means RS is doing the bisecting, it's the bisector of ET. So all we can say there is that those two um, segments are congruent. Now, if we said that RS and ET bisected each other, then not only does RS bisect ET, but ET also bisects RS. And if that were true, then we could say that these, these segments are congruent. Okay, note that these are congruent to each other. They are not all four congruent to each other. Just because two segments bisect each other does not mean that all these segments are congruent. Okay, it just cuts the one, each segment in half. All right, so if we are given that AR and BH bisect each other and want to prove that angle B is congruent to angle H, then we're probably going to have to prove that these two triangles are congruent first. So let's mark our figure with what we can get out of our given. So if AR and BH bisect each other, then that means that this segment is congruent to that segment, and this segment is congruent to that segment. Okay, so now we've got two course sets of corresponding sides of our two triangles. And if you remember from yesterday, we can also use these two angles because they are vertical angles. All right, so if we can prove that these are all congruent, then we have side, angle, side. We can prove the triangles are congruent, and using the uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent theorem, then we can say that this angle is congruent to this angle. All right, so again, first statement given, segment AR and segment BH bisect each other. and that is given. Our next statement. Now we have to say what that means. What we got out of that was that AF is congruent to FR and that HF is congruent to FB. Okay? And we got that because of the definition of bisect. That's what that means. So there are our two sides. Now we just have to get our angle. First we have to state that they are vertical angles. Angle A, F, H, and angle B, F, R, are vertical angles. And that's the definition of vertical angle, so you could say refer to the picture. So, since they're vertical angles, now we can say that they are congruent. Angle AFH is congruent to angle BFR. And the reason we can say that is the fact that vertical angles are congruent. Okay, so now we've got our side and our side and our angle in our proof set up as congruent. And since they are side, angle, side, we can say that the triangle AFH is congruent to triangle RFB by the side, angle, side postulate. 
Okay, but we're not done. What we're really trying to prove is that these angles are congruent to each other. Well, you notice that I set up the triangle congruence statement because AF is congruent to FR. I had to say AF and FR here. Okay, angle F is congruent to angle F, so they go together. And then FH is congruent to FB. So that's why I had to put it in this order. So using that order, we can see that angle H and angle B are congruent. So we can say angle B is congruent to angle H by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles or congruent theorem. All right, and that is using corresponding parts of uh, congruent triangles or congruent theorem.